So if one goes down, one Sister Janet Jones is coming home from rehab, so some good news there. <clears throat> Jesse Stone with her back from a bulging disc, uh, pressing on a nerve. And for the three kids, Everly, Izzy, and Trevor getting over RSV. Valerie Spence's uncle, Joe Buchanan, fell and will need surgery. Sean Clevenger, a friend of uh, Mike's in Vanderbilt Hospital. Uh, Sandy Funk is waiting <clears throat> to hear from... Uh, cardiac structural surgeons and the next steps after her test this past week. Uh, Rosella Teodora is undergoing dialysis and hopes to have a transplant soon. Ed Young, Charlotte's husband with health struggles and Charlotte as she deals with this phase of their lives. And Kevin Beam has been informed that he's been put in for a transfer. And also continue to keep Peggy uh, in your prayers with health challenges. Ben and Imogene, uh, Andy's aunt Lisa Butler with health issues, and also Andy's grandmother Sue Butler, uh, who was recently hospitalized. Dennis Corbin as he awaits surgery to clear out his carotid arteries. Uh, Tony and Katie Yates expecting a baby in April of 2024. And uh, also keep Bobby Wallace, uh, who's dealing with uh, pneumonia. And also uh, Bobby's sisters, uh, Donna, Cynthia, and Rosie Shiflett. Uh, Saturday, January 6th, uh, there will be a holiday party at the Bettises. Begins at 4 p.m. Please bring uh, food to share. There will also be a white elephant gift game if you want to participate. Bring a wrapped gift with a value of around $10. Uh, there will be a potluck meal. Uh, will be held today after morning service. And then evening service will begin at 1.30 with no 6 p.m. service. For birthdays, uh, January 6th, Robert Calvert. Uh, there's no anniversaries this week. Uh, leading us in worship today, uh, Scooter will lead us in singing. Uh, opening prayer will be Bob Wall. Uh, Terry Zinn will have the Lord's Supper. Uh, Mitch will have the scripture reading. And Tony uh, Yates will have the closing prayer. And uh, Mike's lesson today, an excellent uh, New Year's resolution. And also, if Tony, you can bless the food uh, for the closing prayer. Uh, is there any other announcements? Well, Karen's going to have her knee operation on January the 9th. Knee replacement. Karen Sheridan, your prayers for surgery, January 9th, new replacement. Anything else? Yeah, keep our son, um, Yamane, for um, in your prayers for um, spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. 
Anything else? If not, something. Dave's got a yeah, quick, got quick announcement, and then we'll let's prepare our hearts for worship. It's comfortable coming up here right after the announcements made to lead singing, but I'm not. Scooter's leading this morning. But, but I do want to... Um, I learned this morning we have others that we need to add to our prayer list, and sorry I was rushing around Hunter to, with other things. So, uh, the Justin, the Justin family, several of them are s still sick, so they're home today. Um, learned from Robert this morning that he's still testing positive with COVID, <coughs> struggling with a lot of difficult symptoms right now, so pray for him. Also, Granny Bet is, is home today, not feeling well. But I'm up here to make one announcement. I'm um, going to read something to you. <clears throat> Bear with me. The elders have had a number of discussions about our way forward with deacons. Mike presented a sermon for us several weeks ago concerning this subject. There's only one scripture that provides the qualifications necessary to become a deacon, <clears throat> and that is 1 Timothy 3, 8 through 13, which reads, Likewise, deacons must be reverent, not double-toned, not given to much wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. But let these also first be tested, then let them serve as deacons, being found blameless. Likewise, their wives must be reverent, not slanderers, temperate, faithful in all things. Let deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling, ruling their children and their houses well, for those who have served well as deacons, obtain for themselves a good standing and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. We would like to solicit you, the members, to provide to us names of men you feel meet these qualifications. From these submitted names, we will select and appoint several to become our new deacons. <clears throat> this is the same process that was used in Acts chapter 6 when some of the members in the early church felt that some of the physical needs of, of some were being neglected. Seven men were chosen at that time, and many believed that these were the first deacons to serve in the church. They weren't called deacons at that time, but they had those same qualifications. And we would like to have these names submitted to us by Sunday, January 14th, so two weeks from today, if you could do that. We're also, I'm going to send out an email with this. Um, as a reminder, you know, it'll also be included in our weekly email. So thank you very much. song this morning before our opening prayer will be number four. Number four. <clears throat> I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to Nearer, nearer, nearer. 
to thy precious pleading side. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to Thy precious leading side. There are depths of love that I cannot know. Till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach. Till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where. Christ is the light, because He has set the example for us. We thank you so much, Father, for that Son that you have given, that is sacrifice that you gave for us. And we pray, Father, that you be upon, that you would be upon all those that are upon beds of illness, that you may help them to overcome their illness and help the doctors and the medications to overcome their problems and with their health. We thank you, Father, for all the many blessings that you've laid upon us, for the kindness you've shown us, the love you've shown us. <coughs> Prayers have been out for time and time again here. We pray that the church here in Culpeper will never be divided. That it will always stand. Stand firm in the Word of God. And may you be able to preach us and the teachers of the church that they make sure that they always teach and preach the true Word of God, neither adding to nor taking away from them. And it's not just... Uh, it's our job to see two of these things happen to you. So, Father, we pray that you will guide and direct us in our lives and forgive us of our sins and our trespasses. For we humans, we open Paul Shoulder and I glory. Now we pray that you will be with us as we go through this lesson this morning. And each of us will take it much into our heart and, and try to live the best life possible. For it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Number 286. Number 286. <laughs> reasons that elude me, this song can be a little tricky, um, but I don't think there's a better song to prepare uh, for the Lord's Supper with, so uh, bear with me on this. <clears throat> Tis midnight and on all this Supper each Lord's Day. There was there be any Sunday. To a Christian, it's not an option. Prolonged abstinence from the act of worship is spiritually unhealthy and willful neglect of it is sin. Protecting of the Lord's Supper, as Matthew is uh, mentioned four times in the Bible. In Matthew 26, 26 through 29, Mark 14. 22 through 25, Luke 22, 19 through 20, and 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. I'm going to read from Mark 14, beginning with verse 22. This is Jesus getting ready to institute the Lord's Supper. 
And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Surely I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in this kingdom of God. I love this passage, and I love to read it. He is not going to drink of the fruit of the vine until we're there with him. What a promise. What a future we have to plan for, to be there to drink with him. Let us now give thanks for the, for the bread which represents his body. Father, thank you for your son. Thank you for his death and his courage. Thank you for all that he has done for us, the examples that he has set for us. And thank you for this emblem that we can protect each Lord's Day to remember his body that was nailed to the cross for us, <coughs> for whoever would choose to follow him. And it's through him that we pray. Amen. Likewise, let us remember <coughs> this blood that was shed. <coughs> Father, thank you for this emblem that reminds us each Lord's Day of the pain and suffering that your Son went through. <coughs> it for us, for all of us who would obey him and follow his commandments. Bless us now, Father, as we partake of this fruit of life. Help us to remember him always. It's through him that we pray. Amen. Now, separate and apart from observing the Lord's Supper, since we're assembled here. First uh, Corinthians 16, 1 and 2 commands us, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as you have given orders to the church of Galatia, so you must do also. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, store enough to see their prosper, that there be no collection when they come. How would we function with our banks and checks and credit cards? How would you like to walk downtown holding a big old bag of money? Probably got coins in it, you know, weighs five pounds or something. And even then, somebody there is trying to grab it out of your hand. So we're, we're fortunate that our funds are secure. Uh, but we also lay by in store as we've been commanded. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this time that we can look into our hearts and realize how much you have done for us, how you've cared for us, how we have been. Father, be with us as we return to you a portion of what you've blessed us with, that we may use it to further the work of the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Number 507. Are you sowing the seed of the kingdom, brother, in the morning bright and fair? Are you sowing the seed of the kingdom, brother, in the heat of the noonday's glare? For the harvest time is coming on, and the reaper's work will soon
soon be done. Will your sheaves be many? Will you garner any for the gathering at the harvest home? Are you sowing the seed of the kingdom, brother, in the still and solemn night? Are you sowing the seed of the kingdom, brother, for a harvest pure and white? For the harvest time is coming on, and the reaper's work will soon be done. Will your sheaves be many? Will you garner any for the gathering at the harvest home? Are you sowing the seed of the kingdom, brother, all along the fertile way? Are you sowing the seed of the kingdom, brother, that will bear sheep for Christ each day? For the harvest time is coming on, and the reaper's work will soon be done. Will your sheaves be many? Will you garner any for the gathering at the harvest home? So before our scripture reading and lesson this morning, be number 282. If you're willing and able, please stand with us as we sing this song. Number 282. <clears throat> we'll sing the first and third verses. <clears throat> There's a message true and glad for the sinful and the sad. Bring it out, bring it out. It will give them courage to, it will help them to be true. Bring it out. Bring out the word for land and sea. Still far from Jesus, many live in sin and doubt. Bring out the news that makes men free. against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts 
of wicked, wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Another one we need to uh, add to our prayer list is Julian Dorr. Uh, Julian has been home and he's not been feeling well, so let's, uh, let's uh, keep Julian in our prayers also. If you would please, bookmark Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Hey Mike. Yes. We do need to add um, a family to the prayer list. My friend uh, Vivi, uh, Vivian Wingo lost her husband the day after Christmas. Yeah, so um, keep that family in our prayers if we could. Vivian Wingo? Wingo. Yeah, COVID um, took him. Thank you. Uh -huh. The title of our message is An Excellent New Year's Resolution. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? No. God wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. We are God's salt, light, hands, feet, and messengers who tell the old, old story of Jesus and His love. As the new year approaches, should we examine ourselves as to whether we are in the faith? Identify areas of weakness, frailty, and sin. Repent and commit to doing better. You bet. How often should we test ourselves? Before closing our eyes at night, we should give God a full report of the day's activities. This morning, we will suggest an excellent New, Test, uh, New Year's resolution and show what will happen if we live for Jesus. Don't raise your hand, but have you ever made this New Year's resolution? This is going to be the best year ever. It never happens, does it? Troublesome times do not take a holiday. Sufficient for the day is its own troubles. Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. What is more important than a life of ease, comfort, and pleasure? Answer, the knowledge that our sins are forgiven. God's promise to never leave us or forsake us. And John chapter 4, verse 3. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Far be it from me to suggest a New Year's resolution for you. But here is one that every faithful Christian must commit to. Stand up for Jesus. Why? One word. Eternity. How long is eternity? Franklin Camp said, When an ant walks around the earth one million times, eternity would have just begun. Every day after today, we will exist in either heaven or torment. The choice is ours. How will the world react when we choose the way of the cross? Well, let's talk about it. Look at Luke chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Luke chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. The disciples had been out on a preaching tour, and their message was beginning to have an effect. At the same time, the scribes and Pharisees were trying to keep people from believing that Jesus was the promised Messiah. Beginning in verse 18, 
Jesus is concerned that the faith and loyalty of his disciples would remain strong. Look at Luke chapter 9, verse 18. Jesus was alone praying. Jesus was a man of prayer. Jesus prayed without ceasing. Before moving to the right or to the left, before saying this or that, do we pray for God's guidance and favor? Jesus asked this question. Who do the crowd say that I, the Son of Man, am? Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. From the beginning of his ministry, this has been the underlying question. Some say John the Baptist. Was John a Baptist? Was John a member of the Baptist church? The Greek says John a baptizer. So let's correct the translation. Some say John a baptizer, Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Popular opinion was that Jesus is not the Son of God. In the year 2023, popular opinion is that Jesus is not the Son of God. Speaking to the scribes, Pharisees, and men today, Jesus said, Therefore I say to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. John chapter 8, verse 24. Instead of refuting error, Jesus was more interested in their personal response. But what do you say? Who do you say that I am? Peter made a twofold confession. Jesus is the Christ, referring to his office, and Jesus is the Son of God, referring to his divinity. Infinitely more important than what others think about Jesus is our understanding of who Jesus is and what he came into this world to do. Is Acts chapter 2 or 4 verse 12 true? Nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Are there only five acts of worship authorized in the New Testament? A cappella singing, praying, giving, preaching and teaching, and partaking of the Lord's Supper every first day of the week? Is John chapter 12 verse 48 true? He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him in the last days. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. My friends, that is a yes or no answer. After Peter's good confession of faith, Jesus begins to emphasize his persecution. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and be killed and raised from the dead the third day. These events were prophesied in the Old Testament, yet they were misunderstood by his disciples. Their concept of, an, of the kingdom of God was wrong. And this was the reason Jesus strictly warned them and commanded them to tell no one that he was the sinless Savior. In verse 22, Jesus not only saw the cross, he saw the resurrection after three days. The problem the disciples had was the more Jesus talked about the cross, it became so big in their minds that that was all that they could see. <coughs> to live the successful Christian life, we must be able to see beyond the cross to that happy summer land of bliss. Verse 23, 
Then he said to them, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. This is the most uh, difficult command in the Bible. To become a New Testament Christian, there must be first a desire. Have you ever wanted something so bad that you would do anything to get it? Suppose you were a merchant seeking a pearl of great price and you found it. Would you sell everything that you have to buy it? In the year 2023, the pearl of great price is salvation from sin and eternal life in heaven. But here's the problem. Talk to anybody on the street. Every member of their family is in heaven. How do they know? Because their pastor, their priest, or reverend doctor said so. They didn't have to pick up their Bible. They didn't have to go to church, be baptized, or give up sinful behavior. And neither do I. Forget what Mike Morgan says. Read what Jesus said about the wide gate that leads to destruction in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Number two, we must deny self. Learning to say no to the strongest cravings of our earthly nature. Getting self out of the way has been a struggle for man since the Garden of Eden. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 is a divine commentary on self-denial. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Self is dead. Christ is now living in Paul. But how is Christ living in him? And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Is that faith only? No. Paul's faith was an obedient faith. Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. When Jesus died on the cross, that was not the only crucifixion that took place. There is a crucifixion that must take place in our life, the crucifixion of self. You know, self wants to hold on to the physical, temporal, tangible things of this world. But when self is crucified, the world loses its hold, its grip, and its appeal. The Apostle Paul said, I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Disqualified from what? Chris, disqualified from going to heaven. Instead of the word discipline, the American Standard Version uses the word buffet, which means to knock out. The Revised Standard Version says, I pummel my body and subdue it. What are you doing, Paul? Crucifying self. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 21, Paul said, I die daily. How often did Paul pick up the cross of Christ? Daily. How often did Paul crucify self? Daily. Franklin Camp said, The way of Christ is the way of the cross. The way of the cross is crucifixion. The way of crucifixion is the way of self-denial, and self-denial is a daily way of life. So here's the question. Are we crucifying self? 
Do we discipline, buffet, pummel our bodies by saying no to everything that is contrary to God's Word? This is where the rubber meets the road. No wonder Jesus said, Narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Matthew chapter 7, verse 14. Number three, to become a New Testament Christian, we must take up His cross. Picture Jesus having to carry the cross to the place of His crucifixion. The cross is an instrument of pain, suffering, and death. The verb is take up. This is an intentional, purposeful, picking up the cross, assuming for ourselves and taking on a burden that we know is going to cause suffering, pain, and possibly death. Note what Jesus said about taking up our cross. Look at Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 through 12. Matthew chapter 5. Let's read verses 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Peter and the rest of the apostles rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Acts chapter 5 verse 41. As we walk in the light, as He is in the light, let us remember the words of Peter, who said, Therefore let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their soul to Him in doing good as to a faithful Creator. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 19. And number four, to become a New Testament Christian, we must follow. Follow who? Not the pastor, priest, reverend doctor, or Mike Morgan. Follow slash trust and obey God's Word as it is written. You know, many people claim today to follow Jesus, but not in spirit and in truth. Brethren, it is imperative that we follow Jesus on His terms, according to His instructions outlined in the New Testament. Without the addition of the creeds and doctrines of men or the subtraction of commandments that I don't like. Jesus said, for whoever desires to save his life will uh, lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will, gain, will save it. Luke chapter 9, verse 24. The disciples had a vision of an earthly messianic kingdom with its profits and rewards. But Jesus shows the worthlessness of gaining the whole world in comparing to the treasures of heaven. New Testament Christians who make Jesus and heaven their number one goal will find abundant life with persecution in this world and inexpressible joy in the next life. The key here is for my sake. What is 100 years of, e of earthly life compared to eternity? Answer it is less than a drop of water in the ocean. Untold millions have wasted their lives pursuing earthly wealth and fame. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 8, verse 36, For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Well, how does Jesus know? 
The devil took Jesus up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give to you if you fall down and worship me. <laughs> Jesus knew better. Pointing to the rich and famous, Satan says, You can have all these things if you play the Virginia State Lottery. Would Jesus stand in line to buy a lottery ticket? Or would he quote 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 and 10? Let's read that. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is not the root of all evil, but a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. God forbid that we should gamble our money away or waste our time on anything that will not get us to heaven. Once we come up out of the waters of baptism, we must go with Him, with Him all the way. Why should we choose the way of the cross until the day we die? Answer, because of the most valuable possession that we own, our soul. Why is the soul of man so valuable? Well, number one, it is made in the image and likeness of God. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. Number two is the, uh, that part over which we have much control. Paul said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Look at Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. Colossians chapter 3. Look at verses 12 through 15. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Through faithful obedience to God's Word, we can change our attitude, our disposition, our character, and our eternal destiny. <clears throat> Number three, our soul does not cease to exist after death. When the body is laid down, are we like Rover, dead all over? No. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. As it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. Why has God allowed us another day of life? Answer, to repent of our sins, obey the gospel, and live for Jesus before our time is up. Which for some of us might be today. And number four, our soul is valuable because of the cost to redeem it. The blood of bulls and goats could not take away sin. Only the precious blood of Jesus Christ can wash away our sins and restore our empty, wasted years. So here is the million dollar question. What will a man give in exchange for his or her soul? 
For some people, it is earthly wealth and fame or the passing pleasures of sin. Many sell their souls to false religious doctrine, while others forfeit their soul through procrastination or simply doing nothing. Men will do whatever it takes today to protect their earthly fortune, but they will do nothing to secure their home in heaven. Jesus said, For whoever is ashamed of my word, of me and my word, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes into his glory and in his fathers and of the holy angels. Luke chapter 9 verse 26. To be ashamed of Jesus is a failure to deny self. To be ashamed of Jesus is to refuse to take up his cross. Those who say, not thy will, but my will be done, are ashamed of Jesus Christ. People in Jesus' day were faced with the choice of owning Jesus or dying in their sins. And this is exactly what Revelation chapter 2 verse 10 says. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. Literally, if you die paying for your faith, you remain faithful because heaven is worth it. What will it take for us to stop being so old-fashioned and accept watered-down preaching, forsake the old paths, and walk away from the church that Christ died for? How about a million dollars? How about the lie that all roads lead to heaven? For most people out there, 30 pieces of silver is more than enough. Which is more important? Our physical life or faith in God and faithful obedience to His Word? <laughs> My friends, this question will be answered by every man, woman, and young person who knows the difference or the definition of sinful behavior. If the moral corruption and decay of our society continues and there is no reason to believe that it will not, we may literally be faced with the choice of giving up our faith or giving up our life. We live in an anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-Christianity world. Modernism, humanism, the theory of evolution, and modern education are trying to destroy faith in Jesus Christ and make us believe that the Bible does not contain basic instructions before leaving earth. Are we convinced what the Bible or what the Bible does offer forgiveness of sins and a home in heaven is exceedingly precious and more valuable than the air we breathe? We can attend every Bible class, listen to every sermon that is presented. But unless we demand book, chapter, and verse for all that is said, done and taught in Jesus' name, we will believe every wind of false doctrine and our faith will not stand when the storms of life come crashing in. The lesson here is this. Standing up for Jesus requires the way of the cross which leads home. Here is an excellent New, uh, New Year's question. Michael, insert your name. Do you want to go to heaven? Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of the king in his beauty there. And they tell me that my eyes shall behold. Where he sits on the throne that is whiter than snow, 
in the city that is made of gold. Oh, they tell me that he smiles on his children there, and his smile drives their sorrows away. And they tell me that no tears ever come again in that lovely land of unclouded days. If we follow the way of the cross, we will forever be with Jesus in that land of cloudless days. Standing up for Jesus begins with obeying the gospel. What must I do to be saved? Well, you must hear God's word to have saving faith. We must believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and only Savior of men. We must confess before men that Jesus is Lord and Savior of our life. We must repent of our sins. This is a willful decision to forsake sins and live for Jesus. And we must be scripturally baptized for the remission of sins. Not because our sins have already been forgiven by saying the sinner's prayer. After conversion, we will be added to those of like precious faith. And together we will make it to heaven. If there's someone here this morning that desires to obey the gospel uh, or someone on live stream that desires to secure your home in heaven, we pray that you would stop and drop everything and come and get that done right now. If there's someone here on live stream that desires to uh, the prayers of this congregation, it would be our honor to pray for you. And if there is anyone that has any questions about what the Bible says, please allow us to open up our Bibles and show you book, chapter, and verse why we believe what we believe. Whatever your need is, please come now as we stand. And say. Careless soul, while will you linger wandering from the fold of God? Hear you not the invitation, O great bear, to meet thy God. Careless soul, careless soul, O heed the warning, for your life will soon be gone. Oh, how sad to face the judgment, unprepared. Why so thoughtless are you standing while the fleeting years go by and your life is spent in folly? Oh, prepare to be thy God. Careless soul, careless soul, oh, heed the warning for your life.
and final verses of number 408, the unclouded day. A reminder to uh, bless the food in the closing prayer. First and fourth verses, number 408. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where the storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded sky. They tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me that he smiles on his children there, and his smile drives their sorrows away. And they tell me that no tears ever come again. In that lovely land of unclouded day, oh, the land of cloudless day, oh, the land of an unclouded sky, oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise, oh, they tell me of an closing prayer. Most Holy Father, we come to you. Father, we love you. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you for this day, this time that we had to come together as one to, to worship you in spirit and truth. Father, we'd like to thank you for everyone that's here with one common goal to, to worship you and to just be better people, be better Christians and seeking, seeking and be true, true truth seekers of your word, Father. Father, we thank you for your son Jesus and the gospel and the, the message of hope, Father, and that the opportunity to have our sins remitted, Father. Father, we know that as individuals, as families, as a congregation, we all go through, we go through real problems, Father, and we have real issues, Father. So right now, I just want to pray for everyone here, everyone's house. Father, we know that the, the enemy is here to steal our faith. And we know you want to build our faith, faith Father. Father, be with us in our hearts and mind always. And show us that giving up is not an option, Father. Father, we also want to pray for those on the, on the sick list, Father. Father, we know that you still can heal, but Father, deal with everyone on the prayer, prayer list in your own way, Father. Remind them of your word. Remind them to not give up. Father, thank you for the recent discussions I was able to have over the last couple of weeks with those and, and, and share your word with them, Father. Father, I pray for all here that we can continue to share your word with those and listen to them and truly know what's on their minds, Father. Father, the harvest is plentiful. You show me that. Let us continue to show your word with humility, Father, in the way that you want us to show your, show your word, Father, and share your word, Father. Father, we know there's work to do. Be with us. We know we get weak. Strengthen us, Father. Father, we love you and we thank you. And at this time, Father, as we come together in fellowship, we, we ask you to bless those hands that prepared the food and be with us and let us use that food for the nourishment of our body and let us edify each other with good conversation and sharing the good things that's going on in our lives, Father. And mourn with those that are mourning. Encourage those around us, Father. We love you. We thank you for everything that you do. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen.